Okay, so this week I went from Dominican Republic to the United States and on my way I was 24 it was a 24 hour trip from Dominican to my airport maybe 25 but I wore this shirt that said I preach heaven not COVID and when I got to Atlanta airport I went to the Delta Airlines and I asked the lady uh, if I could hang around and catch the next early flight home to Tulsa and uh, or maybe it was a guy he said it was gonna be $75 to switch my ticket for standby so I, I didn't argue I didn't try to talk him out you know down because I've gotten it for free before um, so anyway, I just I just walked off and and I just felt in my spirit that we're just going to go preach the kingdom of heaven. So I just turned around and I just saw how many people were around, you know, and um, what hit me was you if you start preaching you're going to get kicked out of the airport and you're not going to be able to fly home. You know, like, don't do it. Don't do it. And this message to me, so I thought about, you know, what would I say? And the words just came to me. It seemed like a good idea. And so I just stood there and I looked around to see if there was like, you know, I just scoped out the scene and I just stood there with my shirt that says I preach heaven not COVID and oh I, I got one of them on this one's the opposite one but I preach heaven not COVID and you know this thought just keeps coming to me like dude you're gonna get kicked out of the airport and I just said Jesus Christ had one simple message to heal the sick. To, no, to tell people that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. He told his disciples to heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Now, I, smoke, I, I recorded myself one of these times, and I saw that I was speaking very quickly. And so I slowed it down after that. And um, from time to time... Um, more would be added. I said, he told us to raise the dead. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told us to heal the sick. I pray that if you need healing in your body, that the Holy Ghost would touch you right now and you would receive that healing. Many people are preaching the kingdom of COVID. But just remember that Jesus Christ said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But is it at your hands? Can you see heaven? If you've never met Jesus Christ, seek and you shall find. Ask God for the Holy Ghost and he will give it to you. And don't quit until you get it. And I just did that from, from airport section to airport section. I went down each terminal. Um, I went down each gate. And where there was clusters of people, I just began to, to just say these things out loud over and over and over again. And I counted and... Um, you know, I counted one room and I saw that there was like 100, 150 people in there. And I just kind of saw like what 100, 150 people looked like, you know. And then they all just got my one minute sermon. Boom. And then I just, I, you know, people, some people were like, yeah. Some people were like, thank you. I just gave them a thumbs up, put my head down, kept walking. 
and then I just go to the next one and I just stand there for a little bit and after a while I began to look to see if there was any children that were maybe sleeping and you know so that I I don't want to speak too loud to wake them up you know trying to be considerate and when they came over the intercom I would you know watch the lady at the front desk and if they began to come over the intercom and speak I'd let them speak and then I would restart or finish my um, message and if they come over the radio I just stop and I just let them talk and then I would talk again and I'd be considerate of what was going on around me but I continued and then um, I got to my last terminal and I hadn't eaten anything yet I was kind of deciding to go eat and I was like no I'm gonna push on and um, and while at mid preach um, a security guard came up to me and just said you know you, you can't be yelling you can't be talking you know I just gotta be quiet or otherwise I'm gonna cut you out of your flight you know where are you going and I was just like I'm going to eat and he said all right go eat and um, and I just shook the dust from my feet. That's the first thing that came to my head. Shake the dust from your feet, wipe the dust from your feet, and just go. And uh, I did. I just, right there in front of everybody. A couple of people chuckled. I don't know if they chuckled because, you know, they wanted me to shut up or chuckled because they knew what I was doing. You know, didn't really care. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't between, I wasn't in front of them. I was in front of the Lord and he was speaking to me and I'm just walking. And I followed Jesus's, you know, direction. And uh, one guy came up to me, um, gave me a fist bump while I was preaching. Um, you know, a lot of people, it, you know, you just get, no one was like, shut up or anything like that. Um, so it was, a, it was a really good time. And then um, when I was going from one terminal to a, you know, going down and getting on the little train that goes uh, to the next terminal, um, there was a lady there, and I left that uh, that testimony on another page. But it was perfect timing that I walked into this lady, you know, and I'm and I'm standing there, and and I'm looking at her, and she's like, she's got two big heavy bags, and she's trying to carry her baby, in the in the um, that thing, um, the car seat, and I was like. You know, I'm just seeing like my wife has traveled without me with the kids at times. And I'm like, dang, that's what I'm seeing right here. I'm seeing, you know, she just needs help. Like, so, and then all those spirits from the world come in and just say, oh, don't help her with her bags. You know, what if, you know, they're going to frame, you know, put you, you got drugs, right? Uh, you know, you got, if you do something or you, you know, she ends up missing something, it's all going to be on you. You know, if they find drugs in her purse, they can just say that you did it uh, because you were there, whatever. You know, all those spirits came at me and I was like, dude, I got to help this lady. I mean, everybody's just going right past her, not even caring anything. I'm like, you got to be kidding me right now. Like, could I? I'm like, fine, I'll do it. And everything in me that was trained over the intercom um, in the airports and everywhere you go just told me, don't even help her. You'll get, you'll get, you know, don't help her. And I just couldn't stop. And I just, I, ma'am, can I help you? I, and she didn't speak English, so she spoke Spanish. So I said, ayuda. And uh, she said, si, which means yes. And uh, so I carried her purse and her bag of, she had a bag of shoes. And I just carried her bag of shoes and her purse and all these spirits are like, dude, they're going to think you're getting into her purse or you're stealing from her. You shouldn't be helping her. Um, and and what I did, I just positioned myself in front of her in the way that we were going. And, um, and so she didn't have to look behind me, you know. And, um, and she was carrying the baby. And I could tell she was very tired. And I offered to carry the baby, but I didn't, you know she uh you know, she wanted to carry the baby herself which is okay like i understand that so i just walked with her and we went all the way to uh to her gate and we got there and they had already loaded everybody up and we got there just in time uh and they scanned her ticket and um i just tell you this is a testimony not 
to toot my own horn or to get the glory or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I gave her 50 bucks and it just seemed to light up her world. And she was wearing a coat and she was like sweating. And plus she got the face mask on, so dumb. She's just, but she got, and she was, she was getting out of the train when I met her. So she was gonna go off into some other part of the, the airport. And she was at the opposite end of the airport. Like we're down here, you're supposed to be down here. So we, we had to go all the way to F uh, from the one that's on the end. And anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, it was just awesome that it's like while you're preaching, you know, the kingdom of heaven, you're going to walk into a situation, um, you know, like God, God, if you're like walking, preaching the kingdom of heaven, like you're going to walk into what you need to walk into and you can be someone's kingdom of heaven for that day you know and you know i i know that it, but more now than ever do we need to be preaching out loud the kingdom of heaven i, I was getting this today while i was at walmart <clears throat> more now than ever do we need to be preaching the kingdom of heaven more now than ever in any time in history do now we need to preach the kingdom of heaven we need to sing the song of Moses. Now, the book of Revelation says that we sung the song of Moses. What's the song of Moses? If you look <laughs> at Moses' life, if you look at what he did, if you look at what God did through Moses, for all those Israelites, I mean, there's estimates of, you know, at least a million people, three million maybe, just walking through the desert, getting fed by a rock that spits out water and um, manna that shows up in the morning, which is like just this honey bread substance that lasts for one day. Every day God is feeding. And so... I mean, you sung the song of Moses. If you seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, he will provide everything for you. You can be like Elijah, just sitting next to a river, getting drinking of the brook, and he's bringing you food. <sighs> the mark of the beast is coming. You overcome the world by the word of of your testimony, the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so get some testimonies about overcoming the world. How do you do that? Forsake all. It always goes back to, you know, you're going to have to forsake all. At one point, I would imagine, unless, you know, there's communities of Jesus, you know, that don't, communities without the mark, if that's possible. <laughs> You know, we can isolate ourselves off and you guys can have over there. We can, we'll just stay over here and, you know, have fun. If that's even possible. So, I don't know what's going to happen in the end days. I mean, I would hope that not a, really not enough people would believe on all the craziness. But there is. I mean... They teach us lies. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's, that's it. <laughs>